months. It's been 15 months since I've seen you? I, I think so, yeah. Like, probably like February, March of last year. Yeah, was the last, last that's year. right. And what did you change? Well, I mean, I because of you, I've just totally, totally revamped my forehand. You revamped your forehand. And it's just, it's good. It's, it's good? my best shot. What did you change? Like, what well, exactly? For, I, I had the old-fashioned forehand. I was, I didn't have a good loop. I was waiting. With well, I remember that. With the but we already changed that when we worked together. Like, did you change, oh, we changed, things? We changed to waiting. We changed to waiting. The for timing. The, with the racket on side, the left hand out. Yep. For the loop with the loop with the gravity going through, and the absolute biggest thing was. Yeah. I'm sure you remember this. I was stopping my swing. That's right. Left. That's right. And that's right. Most of the time now. I now you finish. Around. Okay, good. That, and that's a, that's a huge. But change. you you're saying you cha you changed even more after we took that little oh, break? No, 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 no. I'm saying through. I mean, maybe maybe little. No, maybe a little no, details. But the vast run. majority of changes that was, was happened good. when we worked together. That's been good. All right, let me take a look here. To hit a couple of forehands. Nice. Good. Another thing that's improved, where you used to make contact like much further behind. Oh, absolutely. And now you're, you're more in front. You're starting the rotation much sooner, which is really good. You're sequencing the rotation much better. Here, do a couple more. There it is. The one thing that I would advise you to, yeah. to, to still pay attention to is how far back your left hand goes. See, what you're doing is like you're doing the Djokovic style where you're, you're taking the racket back and the left hand goes really far back yeah. on this yeah. side. I noticed, yeah. So what happens like a lot that. of times is like because the hand is so far back here, you can't get out of the rotation properly. Mm. And the rotation sequencing is more difficult. So it's not wrong to go here if you can get out of it. But if you feel like you catch yourself being a little bit late, what you can do to adjust that is not allow the left hand to go past the middle point right here. So this is the middle point of your body. Don't allow the left hand to stay past the middle point of the body, but just go here and just let go like this. Okay? That's gonna allow you to rotate faster because the, your, your left hand is closer. So only, so only go to here? Only go to there. Yep, try that. See, actually coiling too much is a problem. You still went too far back. And go a little bit less. A little bit less, right here. Here's the middle part of your body. Go right here. Don't go, so go ahead and turn all the way. Turn all the way. Turn your shoulders. Okay, but now here, let go right here of your left hand. Let go right here in this spot, okay? And now uh, you hit it from here. You're staying too long with the left hand. Your left hand oh, is, words, yeah, hand yeah, you're, you're allowing the left hand to go too far back. There you go. There you go, there it is. What you will find is a lot more power this way. Really? Yes. You get a lot more power. Because what happens is with a lot of recreational players, is that they have the right intention of, of coiling. This happens on the serve too. They, the thought process is correct, but they want to coil a lot. They want to turn a lot and load up the shot. But what if you can't come out of the coil? What if your, bo on, what, if your, what if your body movements are not fast mm -hmm. enough to get out of the coil? Now you're making contact late and you're not actually getting a lot less power. So at the rec level, a tip that I give to pretty much everyone because most people aren't able to get out of the coil that's too large, I tell them don't go past the middle point of your body with your left hand. Now the distance to the ball is shorter. You understand? So mm -hmm. the uncoiling phase is a little bit shorter and it's easier to rotate into the ball because the most important thing on the forehand is making contact at the right place. Right? So because you're not, you're not coiling extra like the pros do, you're mm -hmm. stopping right here, your distance to the contact is shorter and you're able mm -hmm. to rotate a lot easier and you'll make contact more. Probably will help a lot on the return of serve. Well, listen, on the return of serve, you don't really want to coil at all if you're returning a first serve. So that not only does the take back um, get reduced on the return mm -hmm. of serve, but also the amount of turn that you make. Okay. Because on the return of serve, if the first serve comes fast and you coil all the way, you won't be able to come out of this. Mm -hmm. You're guaranteed to make contact too far back. Mm -hmm. So on the return, you minimize your take back, but you also minimize the amount of turn you make. You make a half a turn, or sometimes even a quarter turn, depending on the pace of the serve. Got it. Nice. Nice one. Okay. That was a killer forehand. You always remind me a little bit of Delpo on your forehand. It's the Delpo forehand. There it is. Here, one more and I'm going to rally with you a little bit. Hey, you're looking good, man. You got better. Oh, 
Come again. There's a slice. Come. Good. Go again. Finish it off all the way. Good. I can. Ah! Nice. Go again. You're a beast, man. You're a beast. One more. Here, blast it. You're looking good. You still play volleyball every day? Uh, twice, a week. twice a week. Beach volleyball. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm the oldest guy. And tennis? Uh, two to three times a week. How, how, how young are you now? I would be uh, 69 in a few weeks. 69? Yeah. You're in an unbelievable shape. Thanks. Unbelievable shape. You keep going for many, many years this way. Yes, I actually would like to be in the shape that you're in because I recently got out of shape. I need to follow your lead. But anyway, I look. We're doing it for a, I um, a study, sort of. It was, it was an experiment, definitely. Yeah. yeah, that I'll never do again. But look, there's one more thing on the forehand that I don't yeah. like. It's the following thing. You get a ball, your first move is to go on the bottom here. And then you go up in the loop. So it's kind of like a forehand from the 90s. Like, yeah. I, when I was a junior, I actually hit my forehand that way. Yeah. When I grew up playing way yeah. back, way back in the day. Late 80s, early 90s, that's how my forehand used to be. Yeah, it's like the Ivan Lendl forehand. So I'm going, I'm going like this to the loop position. Yes. Instead of, instead of straight. Yes, absolutely, right yes. So you're going here, here first, first move. And then you raise the racket up. It's not optimal because now, yeah, listen, the racket has to go up and then back down. It's not as fluid, not, that, not as continuous right. as going like immediately from the top to the bottom. So the first move you make is going top. Okay, excellent. You see what I mean? I totally see. The first move you make, yeah, when you make your, your turn, mm -hmm. you, you keep the racket up. And then from there, you will drop it in the back. Everything else stays the same. The only difference you're making is like, go in your ready position. Okay, now forehand comes, you go here, and that's it. That's the only change you need to make. And not, not, for, not first down and then up. Okay. okay, let me give you a couple of easy feeds. So I'm gonna really work on the loop then. Well, you already have a loop, but it's uh, like the, the way you do it. You're doing like more the, see there was a traditional phase on the modern forehand where yeah. it went from like going like this yeah. to going like this uh, okay. and then it and turn into this on the modern forehand got it. so you got to modernize it just a tad okay now you don't have to exaggerate by the way like you don't have to bring it way up over your head it's unnecessary to just go like this okay. all you got to do is look all you got to do is just here stay here with the with the top of your racket it doesn't even require you to raise your hand it's just that the tip of the racket needs to be like up more right, here we go there it is, very clean. That is so clean. And finish it off all the way. Nice. This is Del Potro is in the house officially. Look at these forehands. Okay, how's that feel? Is that okay? It feels, yeah, more Okay, efficient. that's an adjustment that you need, all right? But there's one more thing on the forehand, yep. and you're a little bit narrow with your stances. You pointed that out. Keep the feet. Well, remember, I probably told you this before, yeah. but you're, you're a little bit narrow sometimes. Yeah. And then when you, when you finish, it's as if you're losing balance a little bit. Uh, okay. So a little bit wider base. Wider base. Wider yep. base. At least, at least shoulder width, maybe even more okay. sometimes. Yeah, that's going to allow you to finish much stronger, to okay. connect the contact to the core much stronger. Okay. And maintain your balance throughout the stroke. Got it. Excellent. Come again. And finish it off all the way. I want that racket going backwards. There you go. Racket's going backwards at the end. Oh, la la. Look at these. Look at these forehands. They're killer. Go again. I jinxed you. By the way, the wide base works open stance and closed stance. Okay, so when you do closed stance, you can go a little bit further here. When you do open stance, you go a little further here. Okay, let's talk real quick about open stance and closed stance. Here's the thing about these two stances on the forehand is that they should never be forced. What I find a lot with the recreational level, they 
probably are hearing advice to do open stance because open stance is better. And that's wrong advice. Yes, open stance is better. However, you need to play the forehand with both stances. If this is true at any level of the game, even at the elite level. Now, at the recreational level, what do you think is going to be used more, closed stance or open stance? I, to, I guess closed stance. Okay, that's true. And what about the elite level? It's more open Obviously stance? Obviously open. Right. So the difference there is that how you position yourself on the forehand depends on the penetration of the incoming ball, mm -hmm. mainly. It also depends on your court positioning a little bit. And some, some situations in the court require you to be open stance. But those are specialty circumstances. And the vast majority of the time, so you have to determine whether you do an open stance or closed stance, it's going to depend on one factor, and that is the penetration of the incoming ball. Okay, so what I'm seeing now is I'm doing these slow, soft hand feeds is that you're forcing open stance a little bit. And you're even catching yourself stepping forward with that back foot, which is not a good thing to do. Okay, so when the ball does not have penetration, do your closed stance forehand. When the ball is coming with plenty of penetration, that's when you can do open stance. Okay. So the way you can call a closed stance forehand is a situation where you're stepping up to a ball. It all depends on the ball. Mm -hmm. You're going to step up. When you step up on the forehand, you're going to have to step up with this side. You can't step up with this side because you won't be able to turn your, your, sh your shoulders. Mm -hmm. your, your hips are locked. All right? So you never want to step up with this leg. You step up with this leg so you can maintain your, your setup position. So step up is in relation to the incoming ball that doesn't have a lot of penetration. Softballs, slices, you know, dink shots. There you go. That's a step up situation. So forget your feet. Start thinking about the ball. Oh no, you did a hybrid. You did open and you came through this way. Oh my God. Do it again. Come on, step up, step up. There you go. Go again, allow yourself to step up to the ball. There you go, come again, step up. Much more natural, right? Step up to it, very clean. And now, you don't have to step up because I'm gonna feed it faster, okay? You don't have to step up, watch this. Do it again, you don't have to step up now. You're stepping up when you don't have to. You just wait for it, the ball's coming through the court a little faster and longer. Here, don't step up, wait for it. Okay, go again, wait for it. Okay, and now step up. Okay, you see the difference between the two? All right, let's rally a little bit more, okay? Good. Good. Nice. Nice. Step up. And put it away, Robert. Come on. Put it away. Kill it. On the run. Come, come. All right. Great rally. Nice work, man. Here's the things that you got to remember. Three things. Don't take the left hand too far back. Loop starts in the front, not the back. And then make sure that you determine open stance, close stance by the incoming ball. And then continue to work on your finish. The finish has gotten a lot better, but I still see sometimes where you don't finish all the way. Point the racket to the back. Yeah, finish towards, to finish towards the back fence, exactly. So that's actually four things, but three main things that you need to work on. The fourth thing, the finish has gotten a lot better, but continue, continue working on it. Of course, when you do this stuff, you focus on one thing at a time. Yeah. Otherwise, you get confused. So I would pick one of those three things and work on it separately, and uh, I think that you can, you can knock this out in a couple of weeks. Okay. Seriously, I think you, yeah, your forehand is looking great, man.